All right, <clears throat> going live on a, a StarCraft replay recording. I'm setting my camera to my opponent, and this is a Terran versus Terran, so we're going. Uh, going to run it at a high speed here. This is a fairly short match. We, we ended it in the early game, so I want to say five minutes is about when you would worry about a one base push. Ten minutes is about where the you know, game really starts to get heated. Five minutes first conflict, ten minutes is like the mid game, the, the real conflict is starting on a scaled up level, and then as you hit 15, 20, it just gets insane. Um, but you're trying to checkmate your opponent basically however you can, and in this game, I managed to do it by keeping my key units alive and with very red hit points, and just putting them in an untouchable position, and uh, using some clever ambushes. So he. He snuck a guy into my base, a worker, at the early game. He's trying to scout and see what kind of buildings I'm doing. And uh, I actually walled him in so he couldn't get out. Put a couple of um, Marines to follow him around and shoot him down. We don't want any intruders in our base. We don't, And if we have them, we're not letting them leave alive. So that's the goal there. So bear in mind, this is my opponent's perspective of his game versus me. You want a piece of me, boy? Add-ons, good to go. Ready. I've scouted some of this. I didn't know, know that he took his second base and that he's... Uh, I do drop a scan here soon and realize that he's fortifying it with the bunker, the wall, the tank. So I get to see everything underneath that scan. And I'm like, okay. He's, uh, he's interested in playing safe and fortified. So you don't want to attack into that because you'll, you know, you'll trade. But he does go for a quick, a relatively quick... Um, Add on complete. Liberator. And this is kind of an interesting play, because he does good with this. He sets it up, and my turret, my anti-air turret, is building there. And the first thing it shoots is the worker building it. And he gets kills off of it. And he's and I'm not going to be able to finish that turret. So he moves over. When I see him moving, I went ahead and sent a worker down there to finish the turret. I uh, lose another boy there. Add-ons, good to go. So this is the normal game speed here. And then he looks back and he sees I'm building a turret up top that's going to be able to reach where he's at. So he's going to try to change the attack angle. And by doing so, he left that little pathway open on the right. So I come out of the fog of the war with the Marines I'd been uh, chilling with. And we destroy the Liberator. Ready to raise some hell. Ready. He's banked quite the bit of resources. You look at the supply, and he's at uh, 39 uh, Army 41 workers, and I'm at 25 Army 41 workers. So he has uh, significantly, significantly more army than me. Because I'm having to put my, my attention on replacing those workers and not producing an army, right? Now he gets this battle cruiser, and that is a fast battle cruiser. He really went for that tech quick. And the tanks make him almost impossible to attack from ground. He has a lot of tanks. Those are not cheap units. And they hit hard and they hit far. And you have enough of them. And uh, It's the, the quintessential anti-ground zoning tool when it's in its siege mode. So you do not uh, do not push mass tanks by ground. It's, it's suicide. So here, he's going to hear that his unit's under attack. He looks, boom, boom. Boom, he drops the scan to see the mines, but it's too late. And if you want, let's watch that, that replay there. I'm just going to rewind that a little bit. And put this on my my camera. It does switch the color, so this is me on the other side of the map. And I was not expecting a battle cruiser, so, you know, I'm doing my work. You can see there, I've almost finished with the Liberator range upgrade. Because I do know he's going tanks. That's why I want the Liberator range. I unbarrel my mines and put them here. So he doesn't look until after he's already hit. One, two, three, four, and I had a fifth uh, ready to come out too. So I did lose a couple of mines, but those are cheap. And if you saw the XP there, uh, I'll switch it back to my buddies, or my opponent's mineral camera. Mineral cluster depleted. Depleted um, that mineral cluster. That was 700 XP. That means 700 resources lost. So whatever lead he had by losing that battle cruiser, I want to say I, I really evened it out. So he's at 52.53. I'm at 40.53. Ready to raise some hell. So our economies are about equal. 
even though he got that early harass on me. And his army is slightly larger now. It's not the, the big lead that it was. Research complete. So I scan this and I realize hmm, he's got a lot of tanks and a lot of units that hit uh, ground. So the, the flamethrowers on those those uh, Hellions are strong against infantry. So my plan of using a lot of infantry to kind of be the backbone of my army, I'm kind of thinking maybe not so much now because we have these you know armored, uh, fast-moving Hellions that can toast my, my infantry pretty quick. Here's the play. Watch this. These Liberators, the AI naturally targets the Marines because they can shoot up, and the tanks will have to unsiege. So again, the Marines cannot get through, the tanks are getting shot, and this battle's happening here on the back end. The Vikings do bonus damage to Mechanical, so I use them to uh, help deal with the Hellions. And I'm moving my landmines over here to try and zone out the battle cruiser. It is one of the few units in the game that can move and shoot at the same time. So he is able to return fire while moving. But I retreat my Liberator with like almost no hit points and set him up here. The tank's gone. I can now land on the ground with the Vikings and deal that anti-mechanical damage to his workers. You can see three hits from a Viking is enough to kill a worker. So these can shoot up rather quickly and they don't have an easy means to escape. And my opponent complimented me, saying he wished that he could do what I just did. And I always stay in the game for a minute or two extra just to plan my transition, plan my follow-up, fortify my exposed bases, take a new expansion, decide on an upgrade or a tech switch, and then spend all my money down and just practice that as... Uh, because it's important to spend your money down. So whenever you win the game, I look at my money, and if I have a bunch of bank, I'm like, okay, let's spend it down real quick. What if my opponent stayed in the game? What, uh, you know, uh, how would I deal with that? And you can see here, I actually had the follow-up already planned. I had uh, more units producing. I had an air force coming out. Um, fortifications going up on my weak base, turrets, bunkers. Um, I had marines producing from all of my barracks. These are increasing the amount of infantry I can produce. Rally these to the two. Uh, barracks. You know, I did a lot there off screen just to kind of prepare to stay in the game. Uh, more tanks on the way or, you know, whatever it is. So that's it. Um, just really happy with that game. Really happy with being able to retreat this guy with nine hit points, 14 kills. Um, the tank didn't get so many kills. The cyclone, Cyclone's got no action, but these are really good against the um, the, the battle cruisers, because as the battle cruisers can move and shoot, these can stay out of range, but also follow them and shoot. So you can stay out of range and put some DPS down on the battle cruiser. Um, yeah, yeah, just a real, real fun game to just kind of bait switch, checkmate my opponent off his third base, and of course I have my fourth base already built, so I shut down. I guess this was my opponent's fourth base. He just landed his fourth. He had three workers on it. But yeah, in terms of supply, I'm at, at 67 army, he's at 16. I have 61 workers, he has 36. So he wasn't coming back from this. He would have been on three bases, I would have been on four. I would have up to 88 workers or something like that. And then we would have added on more production and I would have spent all this money into army. And eventually he would have just gotten snowballed under. So he probably, so he realized he didn't have a fighting chance. And that was game. GG. And thank you for watching.